the story of Zacchaeus that we hear today in our gospel is an early warning sign that we are on our way to the journey to Pascha. We're about to begin that journey. Because every year the Sunday following the Sunday of Zacchaeus is uh, the beginning of what we call the Lenten Triodion. So this is the series of, of, of holy days and commemorations. First of all, a pre-Lenten season, and then Lent, and then Holy Week, and then Pascha. So anytime you hear the Gospel reading, like we did today, about the Z Z Zacchaeus, that means that uh, Lent is just around the corner. Now Zacchaeus, it says, was a chief tax collector, and that he was rich. Nothing that is in the, the Gospels, that the evangelists put in the Gospels, is just there, sort of like for Bible trivia. You know, what kind of tax collector was, was Zacchaeus a chief tax collector? Everything has a point. So because we learn that Zacchaeus is a chief tax collector and that he's very rich, this means that he is a man of power and influence in his community. And if he wanted to see Jesus, he could have simply sent out his, I don't know, minions and said, Zacchaeus wants to see you, Jesus, and, you know, brought Jesus over to his place. But instead it says that he goes and he climbs up this tree. And again, a detail, because it doesn't just say that he climbed up a tree, he climbed up a sycamore tree. So what is the deal with the fact that it's a sycamore tree? Again, this is not just Bible trivia, but there's a point to the fact that Zacchaeus comes and he climbs up a sycamore tree specifically to see Jesus. So the sycamore tree, first of all, a sycamore tree in the Middle East and the Mediterranean was not the same kind of sycamore tree as in America. That sycamores in the Middle East and the Mediterranean were kind of like fig trees, and they were fruit-bearing trees. Um, the prophet Amos was a keeper of sycamore trees. So they had them in orchards because people ate the fruit. Um, they were very plentiful in that part of the world. They were all over the place. So the fact that Zacchaeus found a sycamore tree comes as no surprise to the first people that hear this because they're all over the place. In fact, they were so abundant that the fruit of the sycamore tree was called the poor man's fruit because anybody could pick them anywhere and sustain themselves on them. So here is one of those, you know, I talk about the scripture having all these paradoxes in them. So here is one of the paradoxes we find in the scriptures. That Zacchaeus, this man of great wealth, turns to this symbol of poverty in order to be able to see Christ. We are reminded of something that we just sung, actually, in the liturgy, in the Beatitudes. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for they, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So to be poor in spirit, to have spiritual poverty, what does that mean? It means to have enough humility to realize how far we are from fellowship, from communion with God. Spiritual poverty is equated with humility. So Zacchaeus then becomes this model for us, right, a powerful rich man who identifies himself with poverty, who has the humility to do this in order to see Christ. But here's this other very interesting thing about the sycamore tree. The fruit of the sycamore tree was a very bitter fruit, but there was a way to make it sweet. Because if you pierce the skin of, the, of the, the fruit, in about three days, the fruit became, it would interact with the air, and it was, became sweet enough to eat. So let's recap that for a second. We have a tree associated with poverty and humility, and its fruit was bitter, but when you pierced it, on the third day, it became sweet. So friends, let me ask you, what is the sycamore tree pointing us towards in the Gospels? The cross. 
It is a symbol of the cross. So when we read the scriptures, one of the most amazing things about the Bible is that it is a story written in a series of fractal patterns. What's a fractal pattern? Okay, a fractal pattern is you have a pattern and you zoom in on a portion of the pattern and you see the pattern repeat itself again. And you zoom in on that portion of the pattern and the pattern repeats itself again and again and again, fractal patterns. You see the story of the scriptures is told in fractal patterns and the story of Zacchaeus is a super magnified story of our entire salvation. That when we run to Christ in humility, recognizing our spiritual poverty through the cross, the bitterness of our sins is turned into the sweetness of forgiveness. That's the story of Zacchaeus. It is a thumbnail sketch of the entire gospel. And so with the story of Zacchaeus in our minds, we are ready to begin the journey to Pascha and that hope in forgiveness. And what do we hear in Pascha but those beautiful and joyful words that through the cross, joy has come into the world. All we need to do, like Zacchaeus, is run to him in humility and lean on the cross, this great symbol of victory and of our salvation through the, the selfless, sacrificial love of God. And to him be all glory, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Thanks for listening to this episode of my podcast. If you'd like to learn more about Eastern Orthodox Christianity but aren't near an Orthodox church, you might be interested in the Fellowship of St. Theophon the Recluse, an online community for seekers and inquirers all in that same situation. We have members in the U.S., Latin America, the British Isles, Africa, and Australia. For more information, message me or send me an email. Until next time, take care and God bless. Music